That's why Satan hated and worked so hard to get Adam and Eve at the, in the garden because the garden was so powerful. Because it was like so selfless. It was just it was just a, a, a place of joy and rejoicing. And um, what were all those other words? You couldn't find them, Doug. If you find them, let us know, okay? <laughs> it's in there somewhere. It's in there somewhere. You see, and, that, and that's the joy of the Lord, your strength. Strength. Strength is not something you try to be. It's not something you try and get. It's something that's in him. We're in him, in his joy. And strength and rightness is a part of that. And absolutely nothing can bring us down. That was the garden. That was the garden. But Satan also knew that he had, he was in serious trouble if that was true. If he let that go on too long, so he said, what would they want that they shouldn't have? We all want to know. We want to know both sides. We want to know what we can't have as well as what we can't have. Then what does that help us do? Decide. Then we can decide. The deciders already decided. Decisions are always made by him, not by us. We want to know it all so that we can weigh it. You're buying something. What's the first thing you do when you look online to buy something? You not only look at what you know about it, you read it all, then you look at what everybody else has said about it. Now, if that isn't the most confusing thing in the entire world, everyone has a different opinion, and there now you're supposed to know what you're supposed to buy and do, should I do that or should I buy that or should I go there or is this the right place it's like everyone has a different opinion even that feeds my sense that I have the right to know it all and knowing it all to decide better. How is that going for you? <laughs> How does that go for you? All oh, about the same way it went in the garden. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> Lucifer can't rub his hands together. You know why? Because he starts fire too when he rubs his hands because he's so excited and they're so hot. That, again, is another picture out of my mind that you may not understand at all. As I said it, I realize that. Excuse me. I'm just saying he loves that. He, he, he's gleeful and delighting. In that, and the thing he hates, the thing he hates My sheep know my voice, and they follow. Oh, he hates that. Because as a sheep, I hear the voice of the one who's calling my heart. And let's face it, that shepherd calls us to do weird things sometimes. 
and things that don't seem right. Why would I buy that one when so many people have had trouble with it? Because I have asked for the righteousness of God to be fulfilled in my life and it's not at this point. So he says, what is needed in that dear soul and that dear saint's life is difficulty and hardship and suffering. So what I will do is I will lead them to buy the thing that would be most difficult for them to have. So that through that, they might know the righteousness of God. And I look at the reviews of everybody else and say, ah, no, that's not the thing to go, I'll go with that one. And I work against the very thing I wanted the most. I'm not against buying online. I'm not against reviews. I'm against the knowledge of good and evil when it's above our ability to handle. That's what I'm against. And the only reason I'm against it is because I know Lucifer was for it. I've discovered by what happens. I say, I, I, I don't understand why the enemy would hate that so much in my life. Why he would be so hard on me in my life. And honestly, we, we do discuss and we, we, we scratch our heads and we pray and we, we beseech his help, his wisdom in understanding that. And um, it came out this, this, this week, I think it was, and it's like, the best way to know is by to look what he hates the most. Then I know that's exactly where I need to be. And his reason for hating it is known easier by him than by us. You understand what I'm saying? If he knows what he hates, then that's my cue to go for that and to love it and to embrace it. He has a reason for hating it. I don't know what his reason for hating it is. I try and figure out what his reason for hating it is. It's enough to know that he hates it. He knows better than I do. Lucifer does. That was a bit revolutionary. It's like I've never taken my cues on what is right and wrong from the wrong. I've always tried to find the right. Have you ever been there? Do you know what I'm talking about? You say, why God this? Why God this? Why God this? How about Job? How about Job? Everything he had, the most righteous person in the world, and the richest, his family, his possessions, his health. Okay, what else do you need? Pretty much, that's it. And in two fell swoops, chapter one and chapter two, <laughs> gone. Even his wife said, curse him, die. Smartest thing to do. Ever been tempted to do that? Ever done it? No show of hands required. We are now on camera. 
Are we on camera? So everyone's going to start sitting on the outside because the camera's right down the middle. Yeah, I, 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 that was me. I'm out, I'm out of camera range. I don't want everyone to know this. Hi, Mom. Singapore. That was me raising my hand. I recognize that pinky, Sonny. My head. My head. There we go. Actually, we are in camera. We're going to try this. Everybody says, why aren't you on video? It's like, we are. I have to behave, that means. Not doing very well so far. And then his friends come in and he says, though he slay me to his wife, uh, to what his wife said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. There you go. There you go. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Can you say that? Can you stand on that? Can you jump up and down on that? Though he slay me, though it will get worse, you say, why God, I don't even understand this. And then it turns another page and the next page is even more difficult. I'll still trust him. The more it goes on, the further I get from understanding it. Now that's where the hard part comes. Like I'm kind of trying to hang on to some humanity here and understanding it. And then that happens and then I'm way out and I'm stretched way beyond my understanding. <laughs> and God has not yet spoken. He's uh, pretty good, but that's being stretched a bit too. has another page of challenge and difficulty and hardship and suffering and inexplicability, if that is a word. Things that happen to us are beyond explanation, beyond human wisdom, beyond human understanding. And that's why Proverbs says, Lean not on your own understanding. See, I'm still going to hang on to it. I'm still going to hang on. I'm not leaning. I came not close enough to lean on it. But at least I'm trying to at least, you know, somewhere in the proximity. Because there else I lose my humanness. I think. Now, if you've never thought these things, I, I want to tell you. I, then I'm confessing everything. See, am I justified by, <clears throat> I'm, I'm human. See, I'm, I'm human. You have a brain. See, all these things. And that's where uh, Joe, the story of Joe really starts getting juicy because all of his friends start coming at him with conventional wisdom. And the worst thing he could have done was to listen. But he listened because he was showing that he was like us. Because we listen to it. Makes a lot of sense. And see, so you got no leg to stand on because you're suffering inexplicably. You can't explain it. And when you can't explain it, your humanity is evaporating and you are way too spiritual. You don't feel comfortable to that degree of spirituality. And you're wondering if that, if it isn't actually better going this way than this way. Anyone ever been there? 
And so I halt the slide. That's it. No more. Give me answers, God, or I'm just going to stand right here. The Bible says to stand, and after you've done everything, to stand. It doesn't say to dig your heels in. It says, when the onslaught of the enemy comes, I will stand on the truth of who Jesus Christ is. And when Jesus Christ says, to move into new areas of ununderstanding, but obedience. See, when obedience and understanding go together, like the Christian life is like a piece of cake. And I want to tell you, that's how it starts. But that is not necessarily the way it continues. And Job had to endure all of the common sense of his friends. And then finally God stepped in. God heard those chapters in which Job spoke to his friends. He heard them, but he didn't answer at that time. Why not? It was the truth. Time to stop. the onslaught of human wisdom. I'm standing on the truth of who God is and I'm going to speak it and say it. And he spoke it and said it and then the friend's barrage just kept coming. God knows our limits. Do you believe that? Most of my life, I've lived like he doesn't know my limits. And that's why I always have to kind of update him from time to time. It's getting a little too far, God. Like I'm telling him something. And he says, what do you really want? Good question. From the one who allowed himself to be sacrificed. Nothing, oh, a lot of blood songs there. It could have been this, it could have been that, it could have been a lot of things, but it had to be that. Not even a cute little lamb, it had to be that. It had to be him. It had to be his blood. It had to be freely given because he took on human form we saw last week in Philippians chapter 2 made himself nothing that was what we were in our humanity taking on the form of a slave a servant that's us in our humanity choosing to do it because we are created in his image, his likeness, and his likeness says he has choice, just like we have choice. And we have choice because he has choice, free will. Brothers and sisters, Romans chapter 12. Brothers and uh, communion. communion. In light of all I have shared with you about God's mercies, the uh, <laughs> the NIV um, readers version, NIV readers version says this: God has shown you His mercy. Now, I saw this reader's version here. It came up there a, a week ago. <clears throat> and so I asked Charlene about it because I'd never really actually heard of it. And it's there. That's it. 
God has shown you his mercy. And then there's that verse that we come up that was read for us there in Romans. I got it right here. I kind of knew it said it there somewhere, but I didn't exactly know where it was, truthfully. If you ever feel that way, don't feel bad because I feel that way all the time. Romans chapter 3. Uh, oh, I don't know. Does he have the capability of showing that? The, no, not, not really too. He's hard to do. Okay. The verse we was up there on the sheet there, but Romans 3. <clears throat> God forgives the sins of those who have faith. God did all this to prove he does what is right. Christ Jesus paid the price to set us free. Communion. Uh, it was that Romans 3, uh, 22 through 26 at the, at the end there. The, the last section there. That's the NIV reader's version. Okay, a nice translation if you're looking for one. Everyone has sinned, and no one measured up measures up to God's glory. The free gift of God's grace makes us right with Him. Christ Jesus paid the price to set us free. God gave us. Uh, God gave Christ as a sacrifice to pay for sins through the spilling of His blood. So God forgives the sins of those who have faith. God did all this to prove that he does what is right. Now here's the verse. Here's the verse. Remember the one back in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 that we were just looking at? God has shown you his mercy. <laughs> maybe, other than the cross, and many times has he shown me mercy this week. So many times it, I break down. I cannot go on one more. And he somehow does something. That's mercy. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. I'm as faithless as they come. That's mercy. He somehow gets me through that. Does something inside. Changes the out. Just changes the environment, the atmosphere, a person, the this and the heart. And the, my heart does something inside me. He just does quick surgery. Done. What happened? It's his mercy. I don't deserve it. I'll turn around in five minutes and deny him. Of course I will. I don't want to. I don't try. But we do. So he, one of the greatest expressions of mercy, he is a God of mercy. So he did not he did not punish for their sins the people who lived before Jesus lived. <sighs> when I read that, it's like, stop, 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 stop the show. Right there, stop the show. I got to think about this. <laughs> now that's where the verse is. I always think about that verse or there's something like that, but I can't think of where it is. Being human is giving benefit of the doubt. And we don't want to push things too far. That's why we keep things in nice, neat, neat, clear boxes as Christians. So we don't push the grace of God too much and expect too much because, of course, we are sinners. Saved by grace, but sinners. And our judgment of others. Oh, judge, well, you're not supposed to judge others, are we? Oh, that was in Philippians 2, and it's going to be in Romans 12. We already get there. So we don't want to push it too far. So. We, we create we create boxes of righteousness for people 
by our own standards, by our own life, and we hold them to it. We hold them to it. <sighs> wrong, wrong, wrong. Uh, I guess I'm flying around today, right? Philippians chapter two, right at the end, it's after verse 11, that little description. We looked at Philippians chapter two last week and I've referred to it here. In that, those first 11 verses, this is a summation of it, summary of it. Remember the verses about mercy here, okay? That's what we're talking about. Paul describes a community, it's a church, a community where every person considers the needs of others first and does nothing from selfishness. It pulls together rather than pulls apart. This isn't the word of God exactly, but it's a summary of the first 11. Beautiful summary. And it is a body that knows its purpose and lets nothing, and lets nothing interfere with it. It is an extended spiritual family where others line up to become part of this sacred assembly and to make it their home because they feel encouragement and they know they are truly loved. <sighs> My friend Shane, who's back there pushing the baby around, mom there kids here called me uh, I was driving in back, back from Bradford about I think about 11 last night and he says I'm at the hospital here with, with Rick Jocelyn still the Germans this mighty man of valor 250,000 people Learned mixed martial arts from him. Three-time champion in Canada. International. Renowned. <coughs> on Concession Street. Sat right there for months and months and months and months and months. Met him here. He spoke in front of us. He spoke out of turn. He spoke of Jesus to everybody he could see. He didn't sleep for a long time, 24 hours a day, just talk about Jesus, talk about Jesus. Right now he's in the hospital and he's on another stage of this journey. And Shane said, I'm here. Um, I think you need to talk to him and pray with him right now. Shane hands his phone to Rick. And I'm driving down the street on the way back from Bradford. I said, how are you doing? He says, I can't remember the past. Today, right now, can't remember the past. I says, how about the present? He said, yes. <laughs> foggy. Not quite sure exactly what's going on. But he says, I know exactly where I'm going. He says, I know I'm on, exactly where I'm going. I feel, he says, John, I feel like I'm on a journey. I feel like I'm, I'm in passage right now at this very moment. And I feel like I'm almost there. I said, we, we miss you terribly. We miss seeing you. He said, those times where I was in your church and worshiped with you, fellowshiped with you, enjoyed the word with you, were the best times of my life. Oh. 
And I said, and I said, those were the best times of my life. They were so amazing. But he said, it's not worse now. He says, I'm on my way to heaven. I'm almost there. It's just, there's dark, but there's light there. Okay, you're on the phone. You're driving back from a long day, long, long day. What do you do now? He goes on and on like this. He talks for like five, six, seven minutes. And uh, honestly, if I had a problem in the world <laughs> at the time, I had got no problem in the world at all. The man literally has got his hand in heaven and he's feeding back to me on this phone driving and I feel it. And I said, just keep talking, just keep talking. You're feeding heavenly manna to me right now, and I am chowing down. He says, yeah, I remember all those funny things you used to say. It was so funny. I just loved it. I loved it. It was just so great. And here, he's about ready to go into heaven, remembering all the funny, stupid things I said during the sermon sometimes. That's crazy. Honestly, it's crazy. And finally, he paused for a minute. I said, I'm gonna pray for you, and I'm not gonna pray for you. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're praising the Lord together. We're rejoicing right now, and to praise God and rejoice together with Him, as I sense He's slipping off, and I said, I, I, I want to come with you. I want to come with you. Lord, when am I going to come? This, this is this is celestial celebration at its finest, like I don't remember ever being through. And here I am driving down the street on the phone with a heavenly messenger sent back. Well, not quite sent back, I guess, still here, but the. Uh, uh, And he said, thank you, thank you. I said, I'll see you when I get there. I'll see you when I get there. I'm still driving down the street. I'm thinking, what in the world am I going to do now? So I played, and I was going to re recount all this and play all this now. But, uh, I pray, played Old Holy Night, my, one of my favorite songs. Oh, holy night. Because it was a holy night. <laughs> For me, it was a holy night. I was still driving. like, wow. I'm on the middle of Book Road, and it's like dark out there. And the stars are out there, and I've been to heaven. And I, I, think, I think I'm actually still there. Although I'm supposed to be driving and operating a, a, a motor vehicle. But I'll tell you, I'm better fit to operate a motor vehicle than I've ever been in my life. The song ends in, <laughs> in celestial grandeur about that night, and there was this night, and there's that night, and we're here to celebrate all these nights. And then I calm down, calm down, boy, calm down, calm down. And all of a sudden, oh, it is well with my soul, it is well with my soul. And I listened to oh, it is well with my soul five times on the rest of the way home. Just kept pushing a button, pushing a button, pushing a button. It's well with my soul, and peace like a river attendeth my way. When sorrows like sor star sorrow bills, you know the song. Whatever my lot, you have taught me to say, it is well. It is well with my soul. My soul had never been so well. And his soul, wow, he was he, he was he was he was already he was already he was already past the gates. By the way, he hasn't died yet. <laughs> Sheen called me afterwards and said, uh, "Wow, that was that was amazing." But he's not dead yet. 
that's when I actually went to Google and actually started reading what he what he had done. I read, reading the, the it's like <laughs> guys that have tenacious women that have tenacious grasp. They don't let go easily, and it doesn't let go. God kept saying, "Remember when my son said it is finished? See, he let go. They didn't take it. He let go." Oh boy, I'm really rambling today. But then again, I was in heaven a little about 12 hours ago, so yeah. take it easy on me. And, and Doug said, I always say Lord. And Doug said something I never thought before. He said, when you say Lord, they all turn, duh, duh, duh. they all turn, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, they all turn all at once. And I thought, never thought of that because I don't know who I'm talking to when I say Lord. Mostly I say Lord. <laughs> Jesus, Father, and Spirit sometimes. But I always say Lord. I don't know why. And that's all, they just all, whoosh, turn, turn, turn. That's a, that, I don't know where you got that from, but that was like, that's so helpful to me. Like they're all like, look at, look at, look at. I don't just get one with one name. See, that's the box. The, mercy, the mercy is they all turn, all at once. So the Father's there for me, the Son's there for me, and the Spirit's there for me. I just say, Lord. And they're all there like, what? Do you need? I'm there. They just shh, just rush in. So where are we here? Back. He is a God of mercy. I'd say pray for Rick, but honestly, the best thing you can do is beg that he'll pray for you. <laughs> you don't need no prayer. <laughs> That's the way it's supposed to be. He is a God of mercy. There's Romans 3. Is that still there? So he did not punish for their sins the people who lived before Jesus lived. I would have said if I were God, just to be on the safe side, well, maybe that we can do work out a Hadsy thing. You know, kind of like half punishment. Or actually just to be absolutely safe, really, it's not fair to the people that after Jesus died, so, you know, they, they, they should be, you know, punished in a way. Because remember what Romans 1 says. Remember what Romans 1 says? There's no excuse because you could see it in all of creation. There's no excuse for sin. See, that's what I would do. Being theologically accurate and appropriate. God is not theologically accurate and appropriate, if I could say it most respectfully. He is more merciful. And so he says, wash, wash everyone before Jesus with the blood of Jesus, even though they lived and died already. Now that is mercy, isn't it? That's crazy mercy. That's the standard of mercy. I'm not there. So I'm not going to say if you're not there, because you can join me and more, but I'm not there. The default is give the benefit of the doubt. When it goes in the sausage machine, remember, see, I, I don't want to mess it up in any way. Mess it up! Too much mercy can always come out even better sausage, always from him, through him, and to him are all things. See, he's in the machine, what goes in, in the machine and what comes out, it's all him and it's all mercy. Wow, we got a lot to do here. So here, brothers and sisters, in light of all I've shared with you about God's mercy, God has shared his mercy with you. I urge you, not, I urge you to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, a sacred offering that will bring him pleasure. This is your reasonable, essential worship. Do not allow this world to mold you into its image. The man has finally flipped and that's on camera. No, I'm saying no. When did the world try to mold you into its image? This week, 
maybe even this day. Do not allow it, you can choose, because he chose to give his life for us. He chose to allow his blood to be shed. He chose to allow the crown of thorn. He chose the spear. He chose the mocking. He chose it. So you choose. Do not let the world allow the world. Don't allow the world to mold you into his image. Instead, be transformed from the inside out. By renewing your mind as a result, you will be able to discern. <sighs> You'll be able to discern what God wants, wills, and whatever God finds good and pleasing and complete. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, we come to the table of communion. The holy table of communion symbolizing your broken body that you allowed your shed blood that <laughs> drained out of you to cover us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. It is well with my soul. If it's not well with your soul today, make it right now. If you don't know Jesus personally, if you've never received him as Lord, if you've never accepted him into your life, if he is not your Savior and your Lord, do it now. He died for you and for your sins, for your inabilities. Don't try to be holy. Ask him for his holiness in you. Dear Lord Jesus, I receive you into my life. Thank you, I have fallen short of your glory. And I receive you on the basis of the shed blood of Jesus and your broken body on the cross to be my Savior and to be my Lord. You are my master. When you speak, I will listen and I will answer and I will do. Period. Thank you. Jesus, I receive you as my own. Now it is well with your soul. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The elders will come and serve you. The bread and the cup. Have your moments with the Lord. It is well with my soul as a standard.